And hello, everybody. I would like to um, to welcome our beautiful guest for our interviews with the Masters, and that is Heather McCutcheon, and she is living in Chicago, so she's had to stay up late to do this interview. Welcome, Heather, and thank you for joining us. Thank so, you so much for having me. Looking forward to our chat. Excellent. So um, anybody that has watched any of our interviews, what we want to do is just talk not only about the systems that that each person is doing, but to get it, to know a little bit more about them and um, how Reiki has served them and, and grown them. So um, Heather is amazing. She has been doing Reiki for quite some time and we'll talk about that soon. Um, but she is also the founder of, she's a, a massage therapist, Reiki master and teacher, the founder and executive direction of the Reiki Brigade, which is an amazing association, which is really about giving people little samples of Reiki um, so they have an understanding and, and they can come to it. And she has offered her, her and her team have worked with over 7,000 people doing um, little 10 minute sessions to the Chicago police and firefighters, homeless veterans, incarcerated individuals, violent interrupters, medical students and faculty, corporate wellness event attendees and more. And the really exciting thing is that this year and um, and in the past too, this year Heather is um, one of the um, one of the people who is presenting and introducing people on the Reiki Summit. So the Global Reiki, Reiki Summit is um, is created by Mariette Reiki Rays and Heather is one of the the um, co-hosts uh, along with Yolanda Williams. So happy days. We're all excited to hear your journey. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, Heather? And, um, and I mean who you are as a person, where you grew up, your family and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, so um, I'm not sure how familiar your primary core listeners are going to be with the Midwest, but I'm from the Midwest here in the United States. Um, so Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Chicago, went to college in Iowa City at the University of Iowa. So all of the cold states in winter, that's where <laughs> I've spent my lifetime. Um, I, as you mentioned, have been a massage therapist for 25 years now, started out in advertising Thing, um, but decided that was a soul sucking corporate job. <laughs> and I was not built for that. Um, so through a series of events, um, broke both my legs playing rugby, <laughs> ended up getting PT for that. Um, walking into the physical therapy place and seeing people wearing t shirts and shorts, really helping people and realizing that that was the kind of job that I wanted. Um, quit my job in advertising and went to massage therapy school to become a massage therapist. It's a big jump, and isn't it? <laughs> it was a big jump. And a lot of people were very upset with me for doing that. Um, I used to make a lot of money as a massage therapist. I do not make a lot of money. It was, a very, it was quite a step down financially. And my brother, for one, said, what are you doing? You're jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. But I just, I felt very called as if it was the right thing to do. And um, funny story, I went to the admissions office, you know, with my check for, you know, $12,000, whatever it was to sign up, had already quit my job, took out a second mortgage on my condo, marched in with my check. And the admissions guy said, okay, where do you get your massages? And I said, I've never had a massage in my life. And he okay. was like, you, you can't, I'm not going to take your money. You can't come to the school until you at least know what you're getting into. So he sent me off to get a massage, which is you know, a, a low bar to have to cross to get into the school. And it's been um, fantastic. I've loved every minute of it and best decision I ever made. And truly, I feel like calling, you know, that you just have that knowledge without any experience that this is what I meant to do. Definitely. So um, then I came across Reiki um, at a difficult time in my life, as many people do. I thought, the the energy healing stuff was ridiculous initially they tried to teach me that in school and i scoffed at it having come from corporate america and still being very kind of corporate minded um when they started talking about energy fields i was like oh no i'm not doing that <laughs> what i'm going to do is people are going to come to me with sore muscles and i'm going to squish them and they're going to feel better and that's that there's not going to be any weird hocus pocus I, I get that. Um, I ran fitness centers for 20 years too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but then I started having experiences where I was feeling what was going on with my clients, their knee pain, their grief, you know, panic attacks, realizing this isn't me, this is this other person. Um, and I kind of worked my way through that, um, recognizing, well, thinking this is a side effect of working in close proximity with people um, that you just have to kind of manage and deal with. And it was still several years after that. Wow that I realized, oh, this is a way you can help people. We're made of energy. We're sharing energy. We're sharing space and time and vibration. And this can be used for positive effect. Excellent. So I was very, very slow on the uptake. Um, but as penance, I now am the poster child for, hey, you should learn about Reiki. Excellent. And people scoff at me. People scoff at me just as I scoffed. And I'm like, okay, I understand that viewpoint. I was there 15 years ago and now I'm here That's <laughs> on the awesome. other side of it. Yeah. Excellent. So how long have you been doing Reiki and energy work? Um, for, yeah, about 15 years. 15 years yeah. It's, yeah. About, yeah, 2010, 14 years. Yeah. And so what led you to, uh, to start Reiki Brigade? Because that is huge working with 7,000 people. That's huge. Yeah, that also, I feel like, was part of the calling. Um, as I said, I, I came to the energy work. I finally was able to wrap my brain around it when I was having a very difficult time in my life. And um, just everything had gone haywire. And two separate people, not even in the context of this is going to be an energy healing session. Once at a yoga studio, the yoga instructor came around afterwards while we're lying in Shavasana and did this. And I was very upset when I came into the class, mind racing, you know, having a hard time keeping my composure, but trying to do something positive. Yes. And she did that. And when I left the class, I was floating. Fabulous. Everything is perfect. The world is exactly the way it's supposed to be. Garbage on the sidewalk? Absolutely. That's where that's supposed to be. If someone had come up to me, I wrote this in my book, if someone had come up to me and punched me in the face in that moment, I would have <laughs> been like, hello, and I would have given him a hug. Like, it was this unbelievable shift from, from this. Um, and I went back after I, like a couple of weeks later when I was good and ready to find out what that was about, if that woman even knew that that had happened. Yeah. Um, my guess is she did not know, but she, I don't know what she studied. She was there teaching yoga. Um, she studied love. And I couldn't the find her. Of it. Yeah. I, I couldn't find her. She well. was gone, gone in the ether. The, the, um, the YMCA had, couldn't track her down, never, didn't know who I was talking about. Just gone. Amazing. Um and then another time I had gone to a class to learn to meditate and a couple people put their hands on me and same thing. I had had a really difficult encounter the evening before I was upset. My heart was like that heavy, you know, tight chest thing. And these people put their hands on me and I floated home just kind of euphoric. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is the most, my, my first thought was, oh my gosh, how did you do that? And my second thought was, if you can do that, can I do that? And if I can do that, can everyone do that? And then why isn't everyone doing that for exactly, everyone? Exactly, exactly. Because yeah, what I what I found when I was having a hard time, I, you know, as someone who became a massage therapist to help people when they're hurting, one of the most difficult parts of my, um, you know, dark night of the soul was, when I was having a very hard time, people came out to kick me while I was down. Instead of coming to help me, people wanted to hurt me. Yeah. And I could not wrap my brain around that. How are people that way? So, what so has you, gone wrong? You didn't understand about vibrational frequency back then, did you, about how we draw experiences? But again, everything's perfect, isn't it? Well, I yes, ultimately, um, I didn't understand about trauma and how people are holding on to trauma and how hurt people hurt people. Um, exactly. And I didn't understand the smiling facades around me. I could not see beyond that. I did not see the hurt people that were there. 
Yeah. So I didn't realize who I was surrounded by until I was hurting and I needed help. And I thought these people would help me and they did not. <laughs> um, so when I realized, okay, there's a lot of people who are in a lot of pain, much more than I realized prior to this experience. The fact that these people could put their hands on me and within a few minutes, I could feel remarkably better. Yeah. Um, which for me, I, I can honestly say was a life-saving shift. Um, this gave me hope. I'm going to get through this. I'm not, this is not going to be my reality going forward. I am going to get through this. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and then when I, when I got through it, what I wanted most was to offer that same thing to other people. So neither of those two individuals called that Reiki. But when I was researching, you know, what is this? What is going on? Um, I came across Reiki and 15 years ago, it did seem to have some of the better name recognition than other things I came across. So I went with that thinking I'm going to incorporate this into my massage practice. I'm going to help people specifically looking for people who are having a very hard time um, in serving those people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, here we are all this time later. And that is what I do. And so, of course, course, in res retrospect, very grateful for everything that got me here. But it was rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, and just when we need it the most, people pull back and then it becomes physician heal thyself, doesn't it? So yeah, find the tools yeah. that work for us. Yeah, yeah. And so how did that lead then to how did you start up Reiki Brigade? How did you do that? Well, um, I joined up with a group of other people who had just learned Reiki as I had just learned Reiki. And we kind of formed this group, um, you know, here in Chicago that was meant to get people together to do Reiki shares, yeah. like, you know, join up in community and offer Reiki so that when you take your class, you have somewhere to go and meet like-minded people. Yeah. Um, but as even in the very formative stages of that, I was thinking, I'm going to be the outreach person, because what I want to do is take all these people who have learned Reiki and get out there and help people. And help all those hurt people. Yes. And still, it was just me for the first few events. It was me out there giving Reiki um, at a city college um, to college students or, you know, wherever, anywhere anyone would let me go. Um I, it took a while, I had to work my way up to the Chicago police department and the fire department and the VA hospitals. I'm, they, I'm were, surprised they let you first, in. That's those were thing. not my first stops. <laughs> right. It, well, it took, it took some time. Um, and I, you know, I do these podcasts and, and I say, this was really challenging. I think maybe if you live in a small town and your brother-in-law is the deputy chief of police, this could be a lot easier for you. But that's not the case in the city of Chicago. There's, we have like 15,000 police officers here and it is a big machine and a brotherhood and a fraternity and they don't want outside help. So it's don't. been, it's been tough. Yeah. But, but now they welcome us with open arms and, um, you know, when are you coming back? That's awesome. So now it's great. It's yeah. a shift, isn't it? It's a real shift. It is. Yeah, I started, I started doing uh, Reiki in 1998. And when I started, people in the town thought I was a witch. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah. yeah, that mentality. And um, it took quite some time. Even a woman wrote an article into the papers and said I was doing the work of the devil, which I kind of was amused by. And apparently it was uh, co-signed by five priests, which really blew me away. And then I, I kind of wrote a six-page rebuffal saying that jesus wrote all of you can do what i do in more and then i thought exactly wait a and then i thought wait a minute this is not my issue this is theirs i rang and exactly. found out the name of the lady and then they told me about the other priests and they didn't give me her phone number but i rang everybody in the phone book with that last name and i got into her husband and i said look your wife has put this article half a page dear editor in the newspapers about me and um she doesn't even know me so she couldn't or, possibly or think, what I do no apparently she couldn't possibly think Reiki's bad because all I do is help people and I thought she might like to pop around for a cup of tea and we could talk about it then she can make a valid judgment he said oh she'll ring you when she gets home and she never did and I just went bless and dismiss that was it and yeah. never heard any more about it so yeah. it is about um finding a path isn't it and then going 
I'm not going to let anybody take me off this this path. And so you've ended well, up. Well, it's funny. It's funny you mention that because when we started our little community with Reiki shares, and we were new, we had all learned Reiki in the last year, year and a half back yeah. when we did that. Um, and we wanted to have some guest speakers and, you know, some mentors. And we went and found some women who had been doing it for 20 years. That's, and that's awesome. social media yeah. was, social media was just kind of coming out. And yeah. we, you know, made some social media channels and um, wanted to kind of take pictures and document and, you know, be out loud about what we were doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And these women we said, do not take my picture, do not put my name, because they had had that experience. Yeah. And when I think about that, and I think about what we have now, you know, speaking of the summit, where there's this Ooh. global community of people, and there are podcasts available, and you, there's so much support, that That's nobody so is true. cornered in their little town, you know, like with their one single voice, up against a group of people who say you're a witch. No, you oh. have all the support. And yeah. one of the things I love about the summit is that people can connect, like follow these people on social media, get into these conversations publicly. Exactly. Your audience can see you having a conversation, but it's not just you, it's you and 300 other people. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, and that way it's amplified and there's support and it's a crowd of people. So your neighbors might you know, if it's just you standing there, they would have that conversation with you and say, I don't believe that you're crazy. But when it's you and 300 other people, your neighbor might think, well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe there's something in that. I mean, I've got over yeah. a thousand students now after all these years and um, Reiki used to be, what is that? But now it's, oh, Reiki. And it, everybody, it's yes. almost commonplace now, which is which is like massage now. They see a similar, similar thing and um, they don't question it like they used to and they, they don't usually think that I'm doing the work of the devil. And um, if they do, I pretty quickly talk about energy and quantum physics and bring it back to scientific base for that type of mind, which you probably do the same thing. That's we've got exactly to, what I do. Because we've got to talk their language first so that they can get to know us and trust us. And then we can pull them across that line to give them more, to give them more. Yeah, so exactly. You mentioned but also use your quote um, from Jesus, these miracles and more will you do because I go to my father. I'm not a religious person, but I know that one. I'll bet. So. I'll bet you do. Yeah, because, and, and it's so true, isn't it? It is so true. Yes. And, and I have yep. this feeling that if one person can do something, everybody can do it. That's my belief. And that was how I cured that bone cancer that I started to mention. I just, I, I remember reading so many books, uh, Florence Govoshin and all those early people in the mind stuff and, um, and how to think differently. And once I realized if one person could do something, we can all do it. And it's just about giving people the confidence and the knowledge and the ability to realize that we are all born healers and the permission um, really permission. That's so true. Yeah. So true. Yeah. And so you mentioned the summit and you yes. are a co-host. So I would am. you like to tell us a little bit about this global Reiki summit that has tens of thousands of people um, on board watching these, these, um, these interviews interviews and, sessions yeah yeah and um I think there's how many speakers this year is it 35 or 36 or something 35 35, 35 speakers yeah it's amazing yeah so, and not just speakers but Reiki visionaries these are experts from around the globe um and as I've been kind of commenting there are some who English is not their first language like the Reiki Rays Maria from Reiki Rays who and, you know, invites the speakers to to come and participate in this really casts a wide, in, you know, a wide net. If you have something interesting, new, novel to contribute, an idea, a perspective, a project that you're working on, work that you do, a technique that you, you know, she wants to hear from you. And, mm -hmm. and we do, we work with people who, you know, we talk a little bit slower. Sometimes we have to edit a little bit if there's a little bit of a language discrepancy, <laughs> but we want those people to be included. And I and really heard. love that about it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, it's that's a lot the of beauty. diverse voices. Yeah. It's the beauty of the internet these days because 
the world is becoming one world again, one global community, and language is just a small barrier that we can move through and overcome, isn't it? Really, to to share. That's right. Even when we when we hear of people like Hiroshi Doi coming out from Japan in those early years and starting to share some of the Japanese techniques, and and then um, some of the other people like the Jikadin Reiki with uh, Java and um, Komiya Reiki Do with Hiyaka Teninamoto, all of those uh, Eastern styles now sort of mixing. And then we kind of look at the connection where even with things like Qigong, where um, we have their foundation movements that are all, we're all, we've only got one body, but we're all doing similar things with this one body. And it's just That's wonderful right. to hear there's different perspectives from other people and you go, oh, I do that. Oh, oh, I already I already know that. And it just rekindles your your joy and your passion again, doesn't it? So that's part of this this global global summit, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's the thing is that, you know, so many perspectives coming in. Um, I started with the summit. It's been, I think, six years ago. They invited me to be a speaker to talk about the Reiki Brigade. And then they invited me back the next year. And they invited me back the next year and Perfect. that was lovely. And then they asked me to be um, a co-host. So I co-hosted last year with Yolanda and invited back to do that again this year. Um, but when I was a speaker, um, as, as a speaker, you get free access, you get the lifetime access to the um, all of the sessions. Wonderful. So I scrolled through and, you know, I've been teaching Reiki for 10 years at that point and you know, so I scrolled through and there's some names I recognized and there are some topics that interested me. And I watched a smattering of the sessions here and there. And that was lovely. As a co-host, now I'm interviewing people, yeah. some of whom I've never heard, you know, Maria finds them and she says, <laughs> you're going to talk to this person. This is what they do. You know, ask a lot of questions, find out about that. And so um, I don't want to say forced because it's a wonderful process <laughs> and I'm very honored to do it. But I, I'm getting a lot more exposure than I did when I was just going through and cherry picking out the sessions that Which I wanted to watch. And watch. I will tell mm. you, I, I learned so much from people that I would not have watched based on, I've never heard that name before. And I'm not quite sure what that topic is about. And I'm so grateful to have that opportunity to spend that time. And my practice and my classes have, you know, elevated. my game is elevated as a result of exposure to, I mean, just all kinds of things. Um, there's a woman, Parita Shaw, who's so write that down. business. Yeah. Parita Shaw, who's so logical and business minded. And she has all these very practical um, things to do. And she's got worksheets and she's got steps and processes and checklists. And it's all like so organized and so easy to follow. Like, Reiki is very nebulous, I yes. feel like. And, you know, people can talk about a lot of different things. And she's yeah. like, here's what we're going to do. And I, you know, I'm a pretty organized person. Me too. And she's I'm... talking and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was speaking my language. Her... <laughs> yes. So she had her, um, the thing is after their um, talk, they have an offer. And so they may give away a free like recorded meditation or a worksheet or a little booklet or give you a discount off a class or membership to something. And she had a worksheet that she gave away last year when I interviewed her and I okay. incorporate that into my classes now. Oh, wow. Like I said, I've been teaching for a long time. Yeah. And I was like, I, this is very helpful for me. Like, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you haven't thought of. And so to listen to all of these very brilliant people with all this experience who have gone their own direction with it and come up with stuff and you can just, this resonates with me. I want this. I'm going to incorporate this. I did not know that. I'm going to do that. And that, um, That's awesome, isn't it? Find what works and just take yep. it on board and add it to your little toolbox. Exactly. And mm -hmm. again, I never would have clicked on her interview based on, I don't remember what the title was last year. Um, I interviewed her again this year. She talked about chakras this year. And again, in the middle of the interview, she was talking about something and I was you know, taking notes. And I said, I bet you've got a work, a worksheet for that. And she said, I absolutely do. <laughs> and I was like, I would like to have Hand one. It of over. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, that's so really fantastic. Good. Um, I interviewed, um, there's this fabulous woman, Rose Weinberg has a not-for-profit called Beam On. And what she does is she attunes blankets and she sends them out. You People mm -hmm. can order them 
for people that they know who are undergoing cancer treatment. That's awesome. So they get this blanket that is attuned to Reiki that they can snuggle in. And she gets fabulous feedback from these people who receive these blankets. That and is so amazing. This would never had occurred to me ever. No. I interviewed um, Robin Benelli, who does animal Reiki. And, you know, I have my rabbits here. I give them Reiki. They love it. And I think of Reiki with, with animals as pets, you know, your pets, you're going to give Reiki to your pets. My students yeah. give Reiki to their pets. And she was talking about not only um, techniques and information that's specific to animal Reiki, which is helpful for anyone who loves animals, but then she was talking about giving Reiki at animal shelters and giving Reiki oh. to livestock. And I was oh, like, oh my yeah. gosh, those are that's fabulous. Here I'm doing outreach and it never, you know, livestock that just never crossed my mind. So anyone who's an animal lover would definitely want to tune in to that. Um, there were definitely some business oriented things. Andrea Kennedy, who's the host of, um, beyond the Reiki gateway podcast yes, yeah, I, I know talked about, yeah, yeah. So she talked about, um, taking your Reiki business and classes online, teaching classes via Zoom remotely, which is a little bit controversial. Um, Andrea's wonderful. I teach my classes in a hybrid fashion. People can be in the classroom and people can Zoom in both. So she and I had a great discussion about that. Um, That's and good. Then, That's good. Yeah. Christian Stone of, um, am I going to remember the name of his business? Standing Stone healing, standing stone, healing therapy has a book coming out. Um, are you Reiki, Reiki business ready? And his mm. whole talk was about, are you contemplating going into business with your, you know, you're doing your Reiki. Um, maybe a lot of people are interested in getting Reiki from you. Are you interested in going into business and how do you know when you're ready to do that? And what are the steps to do that? Mm. And he has a book coming out and he talked about that. So some really practical, mm. applicable information, as well as whenever there was an opportunity and someone was talking about a skill set, intuition, mediumship, whatever, I asked if they would do an exercise. So as you're watching their talk, we might just stop for five or 10 minutes and do an exercise that you can do right there while you're watching. Perfect. perfect. One of <laughs> them was um, Kim, Kim Chesney from Intuition Labs did um, this great visualization exercise and it's about decision-making. So you're going to visualize two different things and ask the question, you know, and then they changed visually. Like to me, who I, I'm not a very visual person, it was such an obvious feedback loop for me yeah. that I think anyone could do in decision making. And I was like, Perfect. this could benefit everyone tuning yeah. into your intuition and having access to this very simple do I do this or do I do this? Um, so just it was so rich. Yeah. And again, I've been doing this a long time. And every single person I talked to. There were Something fabulous new. takeaways. So what are you talking on in the summit this year? I was talking about five marketing tips um, for Reiki teachers. Okay. To, to yeah, attract people to your Reiki classes. I yeah. think that's good too because there are lots of people now getting out there and doing it. In, in the old days, there were lots of, like I think I've got 87 masters or something, but not many of them are out teaching. They're mostly right. doing it for their families and friends and a few of them are doing yep. it out there sharing it. And I just encourage everybody, get out there and do it. But as you say, not everybody's yeah. ready. They, they, uh, right. They've got to have that right. confidence. So so that sounds really good too. That might be something that um, would really help a lot of people. So if you're watching and as as you know, we're with Reiki Australia, will be watching this as well. Hopefully there'll be some masters yeah. out there that are going to jump up and get back into it. Sharing well, I hope so. And for, for me, uh, hopefully the draw for me, what I'm passionate about for having people, you know, promote their classes effectively and have larger classes is obviously it's helpful for the teacher. That's your business. You want to, you know, attract people and feel fulfilled and purposeful in that work. Yeah. But also if, if everyone who's a Reiki master, not everyone, but people who feel called <laughs> to teach are effectively communicating and promoting their classes that's an opportunity for everyone who hears about it that would yeah. not hear about it if they were not effectively promoting their classes. Exactly, so it's, exactly. it's also for the general public. Since I'm about outreach and getting the word out there and letting other people have access to Reiki, again, 
I feel like it saved my life. If those people were not there helping me, I would not be here. I want exactly. as many people as possible to have this. I think of it as like CPR. It's like emotional CPR. Exactly. exactly. I've been trained in CPR for 27 Forever. years. I have never had to administer CPR to anyone. But every single day, I've never, oh, you have. Yeah, I'm an old nurse as well, but yes. When, okay. I, was fif- yeah. when yeah. I was 15, I pulled um, an unconscious blue eight-year-old out of the bottom of the swimming pool, at the, the city swimming pool, and um, carried the child and put him down and did CPR till the ambulance came and he survived. So that was oh my, my gosh, first time, but I've, you I've were done it there. a few times. Yeah, just found, wow. what's, who's that, what's that body down there? But yeah. Back in the old days. (laughs) Thank goodness. I well, probably your nursing background let you have presence of mind. I I wasn't nursing then. I was only fifteen. I was a kid. But that might have been part of the path that led me to nursing. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. That uh, that need to to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never had occasion to give anyone CPR, but on a daily basis, I come across people who are suffering emotionally, psychologically in our society. You know, as I said before, there's a facade that people will show you, but people are hurting and to have access to something that can help them, you know, I feel like is this life-saving thing for people that are really having a hard time. And definitely there's so many of us, there's so many people at the summit speaking at the summit who are you know, Reiki masters now have written books, making a living doing this. So what's the name of your book? What's the name of your book? Um, Connecting the Dots. Ah, that's right. From, from ad, um, from ad exec to energy practitioner, a memoir and guidebook. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So it's, it's my path from Reiki, Reiki skeptic to now, you know, Reiki. Yeah. Reiki activist. Yeah, activist, yeah. that probably is the right word, isn't it? <laughs> it, it? Yeah, one of my volunteers calls me a Reiki activist. And Sounds and it's every awesome. step along the way, every chapter, because, you know, as you're learning this stuff, you know, you're like, well, that can't be real. And then it's happening and you research it and you find data to back up. OK, this is happening. All right. But but that can't possibly be happening. Mediumship, that's not a thing. But wait a minute. Now I seem to be I just know that someone. stuff. I just know that and, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And now, well, past lives, that's, oh, well, nope, that too. Okay. So like step-by-step, step, it's me being incredulous and laughing at myself and then realizing this is a real thing. Oh my gosh, I can do this too. Holy moly. So um, yeah, I understand it's a good read. Ah, uh, I'm excited. I think I'll be, uh, down. is it downloadable from uh, anywhere or we'll just buy the book? You can, there's, yeah, there's like a Kindle version of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's uh, an and- audio book also. Perfect. Uh, probably the audio is going to be mine because I can do that at one o'clock in the morning while everybody in the house there is sleeping. Go. Yeah, I, I do. I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember when I um, first did Reiki, my, I've been running fitness centers for 20 years uh, and my knees were swollen for three years. I had chondromalacia patella, which is cracking out of the patellas, iliotibial yep. band syndrome, inflamed fat pads and patella tendonitis. And I went and did Reiki level one and the master said, you need to stop walk on the beach at Byron Bay for the day, come back on the next two days and do your level two. On the way home, I had a partial Kundalini rising and I got home, put my hands on my knees for 20 minutes and went to bed. And the next morning I got up and the swelling and pain was gone. And I remember going, oh my God, this is not my imagination. And that was the start of the whole journey. But it's that one moment that maybe this is real. And it just, yep. um, it changed my life it's probably the same with you it changes our lives and then all we want to do is get that out there share that yeah give other people the tools to change their own lives too I love it it's just amazing exactly excellent so let me just see what else I've got here um how much work was involved in doing the the summit because you've had to um do so much stuff not just the interviews there's been a lot of background knowledge and all the rest of it isn't isn't that true we actually yeah we start in may um so yolanda and i and maria work together um you know kind of divvying up who's going to interview who um and then we schedule people and some of them again from around the world so just like this you know scheduling it's you know what 
10 o'clock at night for me right and now. It, and it's two o'clock here. I just love it when, when you emailed me and I said, maybe we could do it next week. And then you went, well, I've got tomorrow available. And I went, ah, oh, the universe canceled two of my clients today so you could be here. See how well, that's amazing? I love it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, so we we schedule the interviews and um, we, you know, research and um, kind of decide, you know, what are we going to, what does this person want to talk about and find out a little bit about that so we can have, you know, an educated conversation with them. <laughs> Um, and, and sometimes people are very nervous to talk um, and they have fabulous information to share, but they maybe haven't done a, a lot of, you know, broadcast um, and they really want to stick to talking points. And some people are just very comfortable and they just go off on a conversation <laughs> and then sometimes you're like struggling to keep up with them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's wonderful. Um, but yeah, we started back in May. So it's, it's been, you know, we get the interviews done and then we hand them off to Maria and she does, you know, the production Editing. It's video and audio. Now for the last two years, it's been video oh, and audio good. and she puts together this fabulous, um, you know, there's the platform and all the bells and whistles of all the offers and, you know, click here and et cetera. Um, so yeah, she does the bulk. We, I feel like we do the fun part and she does the hard background work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is a, it's a tremendous undertaking and it's a fabulous production. It's very well curated in terms of who's speaking and what the topics are. And, yes. you know, yeah, it's, so, it's, so good could stuff. you tell everyone a little bit about the pricing structure and all the rest of it? Because I know that um, there's five days of free where you can just yes. watch everything if you don't want to sleep. <laughs> Right. So yeah, so it's 35 sessions, 35 interviews, and they are from November 8th to November 12th. So it is five days. And there are a number of them that are released each day. So eight or whatever that comes out to each day. Um, so you'll have 24 hours to watch those. And it's free if you watch them during that window. So if again, if you have that kind of time, you can watch them all during that time. Um, if you would like to be more leisurely or if you have a, you know, a job and appointments Families. and things happening and you can't watch, yeah, a, a very full life, but you want to take advantage of all of that, you can purchase lifetime access, meaning that you can watch it whenever you want. The next week, the next month, five years later, you can log on and access those sessions. And if you sign up for that before the summit starts, it's only $57. That's amazing. So I, yeah, I think of this as like 35 Reiki classes oh, that, yeah. you know, you, you could get for free, but you have to be on the ball during that week. Um, or you could pay the $57 and get all the stuff and be able to log in and have access to it whenever. I'm, I'm, um, I've been getting these for since 2018 and I still go back, still go back and look at yeah. some of those things. And you take some, so much more the next time around, you just go, I don't think I remember that from last time, but that's now means something different to me. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because I feel like as I'm evolving, you know, as a, as a Reiki practitioner, as a Reiki teacher, um, some of that information hits me differently. Exactly. And, and having spent this much time with the summit, there were things that I was, you know, I, I would kind of bristle a little bit when I heard like, Oh, that's, that's not, like what I know that's different from how I learned it. And now I just have a much more fluid way of receiving, oh, that's what they're doing over there. Or that's how some people do it. Or maybe I'll even try that. You know, I mean, like, I, I think like you, you probably think the same. A lot of that is our ego and how we've been conditioned, yeah. black or white, yeah. right or wrong kind of thing. And then the further down the path and the more you use Reiki, the more you go, we are all one. There are many rivers to the one ocean and we need to keep an open mind so that we can take on so much more and become better healers and better people and have a greater influence in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the way I approach it, and I know that this is a little bit controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can say anything. Some, some people, thank you. <laughs> some people feel like this is how you do it. Every day you're doing this, 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 and this, 
and then you're doing Reiki. And if you're doing anything other than that, you're not doing it. You're not doing it correctly. And that's not how I learned it. And that's not how I do it. And I also think that, you know, usually what's cited is this is how, you know, Mikau Sui did it. And therefore we have to do it exactly that way. But the fact is that, you know, um, Chijiro Hayashi did it differently than so Mikau Sui did it. So true. Madam Takata did it differently than he did it. So they were doing great. They did great things. I'm and with what you. I think is that when we tap to in, evolve. Well, we all have our individual path and, and our, our own, own individual way of working with it. Exactly. Yeah. And so some people are going to take it and go do animal Reiki in this way. And some people are going to do sound healing and some people are going to do massage and outreach. And some people are going to do, you know, whatever mediumship and communicate Definitely. with angels and whatever. We're not all meant to be cookie cutters of I agree. I agree. Mikau Yasui. We're all meant to, and that's why no one's competing with anyone. And that's why there's so much information available because different things are resonating with different people. And it's and, this wonderful tapestry. And, and it's still I, I totally all agree. I mean, um, as the chair of Reiki Australia, I don't know how I fell into that job. It was just happened. But um, I know that there's these guidelines and you have to do everything traditional. I don't teach like that. Um, I do. When I teach, I say, this is traditional. This is how I've evolved it. This is the add-on that I found works really well for me. Find what works for you and run with it. Everything that you learn in these classes is like your training wheels. But once you have exactly. that... Once you have that, your job is to embrace it and bring it into who you are and then share that. Because our, I always think our path on this planet is not about what we do. It's about how we express everything we are through everything that we do. And they're just more tools that can open up perceptions and help more, more people. That's what it's all about, isn't it, really? Right, right. And once yeah. you tap in and you're getting direct guidance and intuition, exactly. Who am I to tell you? No, no, no. Do exactly. it this way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, I remember that one of the first Reiki shares I did, I had, um, we were running fitness centers then, and um, I just invited every Reiki, Reiki person I found in the phone book because we didn't have the internet back then. And I remember everybody just found a partner and some people were starting on the feet and some were starting on the liver and some were starting on the head. And I remember going, oh, they're doing it wrong. And then I went, that's my ego. Oh, it doesn't matter because the Reiki goes wherever it needs to go and whatever works, yep. works. And, and um, that was just such a great lesson to just catch myself thinking that. So everything I, every time I find myself judging something else as not being what I do, I go, that's my ego, put that away and just open and then go, what can I learn from that? Because that's really what it's all about, yep. isn't it? So yep. what are some of your greatest challenges and your greatest joys that you've learned through this lifetime, through this journey, this Reiki journey, this, this um, journey of sharing everything that you do with so many different people in so many different levels? Um, I would say one of my biggest challenges is that I want everyone to have access to this and to appreciate how wonderful it is and people don't receive it. Not everybody receives it that way. I get yes. doors slammed in my face. People hang up on me. People scoff at us. People, you know, that's ridiculous. That's pseudoscience. I had a guy say to me, um, we were at a medical school giving Reiki to medical students. And there was a line of, of medical students waiting and medical students sitting in the chairs, getting Reiki and loving it. And some guy came up and said, this is, I can't even believe they let you in here. This is pseudoscience. This is a this is a prestigious medical school. I can't even believe they let you in here. And I guess that's one of my biggest challenges, even though I was that person when, when Reiki was introduced to me and I yep. was like, oh, that can't be real. It's hard for me. And I don't think it's hard for me because my feelings are hurt. I don't think it's my ego. It's I want yep. people to have access to it. And that you want to overflow that love energy is what you're doing, isn't it? Yes. And yeah. especially, especially in people who are in positions, because as I approach these institutions, there's a decision maker, there's a gatekeeper. Yeah. And there's a population behind them that I know can benefit tremendously. And sometimes we've even worked with them and they've loved it. And then somebody and will then, move oh, to no, another job. We don't job. want anyone to know. Yeah. 
well, someone will move to another job and a new person will come in and the new person will say, that's ridiculous. We're not doing it. We've been doing it for four years. Your people, your team, the people whose health and well-being it is your job to support, love this and want it. And if that person decides we're not doing it, I can't get in anymore. That's the end of that. That I would say is my biggest challenge. It's so hard for me not to have access to the people who know what it is and want it. And Mm -hmm. someone's there saying no. Yeah. That's hard. It's it's almost criminal, isn't it? Because they're closing a door to someone else's healing. They're literally, when can you come back? You will not see me again. I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> it's hard so yeah I had, a, I had a, a client here earlier on today like I work with a lot of because I've had cancer three times I work with a lot of people with cancers um and I have a lady who has um has started with ovarian cancer and her, her markers when she first started her cancer markers were up to 700 and now they're down to below 20 and she just said to me today and she's she's got the wrong genetics too but she said to me today she's got one more chemo to go and the doctors can't believe she is so well and that all her results are so good and um it's just she said I tell everybody about you and they all know you but I haven't told the doctors I don't know what to do I'm going to tell them I went about time and it is that fear of being judged and often um as like um, Steve Beerman is a, a medical, um, uh, well, he's a doctor and he's also a hypnotherapist. And he says people in a state of anxiety will trust the highest source of, of um, power. So if you are getting a bad diagnosis from your doctor, you're going to believe everything they say. And what you need to then say to them is, yes, but you don't know me. So that you can open yeah. that door of possibility and it really is getting their mind across that pathway. And so I understand when people are afraid to tell their doctor that this is what they've been doing and that's why the doctors are saying this is a miracle, how can you be so well? And um, because they don't want to have the doctor then say, no, that can't happen. I mean, I had a another one of my friends who had a brain tumour and she was... Um, she couldn't walk. I did one treatment the next day when I called in, she was talking and she said, the fuzziness has gone out of my head and look, I can move my arms and legs. And she got really well and was actually going out for cups of coffee um, a couple of times a week with a walking frame until the doctor said to her, get this nonsense out of your head. You can't oh, win. No. You will not um, survive. Get your things in, in order. You're going to die. She died a week later. Oh, we no. So it's just, um, it's just not only people. terrible for her, but proving himself right. Herself. You know, there he's was a female now, doctor too. Yeah. Yeah. Emboldened by his own prediction. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. So it really is. We're not just working with a physical body. We're working with their mind, their energy, their spirit. Yeah. And, um, and if we can kind of cross that barrier, we open up possibilities. And if we've got possibilities, they're flexible. They're not set in stone, are they? So our journey is not always easy as a healer. Well, so, you you asked me to say some challenges and then you asked me to choice. say some highlights. And I, I yeah. didn't, yeah, I want to, I don't want to leave it with just the challenges. Me either. Um, That's what I was about to just remind you. Well, I, I've spoken at the summit. One of the years I talked about the program that I did inside the juvenile detention center, which is the kids awesome. jail. Yep. Yeah. So we went in and gave staff Reiki. And once they thought it was awesome, they let us have access to the kids and it gave the, some of the kids Reiki. And then I taught a class inside Perfect. the kids That's jail. Awesome. Yeah. And I did not know what to expect. Obviously it was a big adventure and it was one of the more rewarding experiences of my life in that. Um, one of the kids in the class who scowled at me through the whole class, like I I was a little bit nervous. There were security guards in the back of the room, but I I felt like this guy not making any eye contact, scowling at me. But then when I did kind of a verbal quiz halfway through on the information, he knew all the answers. And at the end, when we did the paired exercise, his partner just slumped over just immediately. And I saw he was so excited. And then after the session, they were chatting and he said, I felt a big 
you know, all this static cloud above your head. And the other kid said, oh, I just got so relaxed. I couldn't even keep my head up. And they both were so excited. First time I'd seen either of them smile all day. Perfect, perfect. And it was, I, I, it was just this really incredible experience. It, um, so that was seeing a the lights come on in somebody's eyes, especially in that sort of situation. You in don't a, expect it. Exactly. Yeah. In that environment. Um, and another, I mean, there's so many, obviously every event we go to each session, we, we, um, capture feedback from people. And I post that, um, by the way, anybody who's watching right now has access to this right now, please follow us on Instagram. I post recaps of these events and you can see photos and you can see feedback from people and you can see all these places that we're going to. And, and hopefully and we'll that's inspiring. This, we'll post these links underneath this video as well. Yeah. yeah, it's Reiki Reiki Brigade. All the you know Facebook, Instagram, it's Reiki Brigade. Um, but hopefully that's inspiring to you, and you'll get a little boost of endorphins. Um, you know, just seeing um, all these wonderful experiences people are having. But uh, another thing that pops up is, you know, as I said, we've had trouble getting into some of these larger institutions. Um, there's a lot of violence in Chicago right now. We I have protests against the. Well, yeah, we we have a lot of uh, shooting. We have a lot of gang activity and we, we have a have lot that. of police officer um, excessive use of force, people getting shot and killed by police officers who may or may not have been committing crimes. It's a problem. Wow. Um, wow. And it's been difficult getting in there. We also have a very high suicide rate, police officers killing themselves. It's a very hard job. And it's very hard to be a person of color in the city of Chicago with the police department that has historically, integrity has not been spectacular. Um, they are turning things around now, that's great. Um, and we're able to go in and give Reiki, which is great. But it's been very hard to get in there because it's a very closed system. It's very us and them. And yep. that sense of you're ridiculous. We know everything. We carry the guns. We don't want that. And um, last year, someone high up in the administration called me. There had been an incident. There had been a, a police officer died. Somebody died in the line of duty. And someone high up called me out of the blue and said, can you come? Wow. So this is the difference between me banging on doors and begging them to let us come in. And then something bad happens and they're like, where's that woman's card? Where are those Reiki people? That wow. was their thought. How do we That's help our people so deal good. with this? Reiki is the answer. And they called me and said, please come and help with this. And it was, I just felt like it was this huge level up in terms Shift. of, yes, them acknowledging that this is beneficial. Our people can use this. We want to, you know, put time and energy towards helping because wellness has not been on the radar at all, yeah. except for the last few years. So we're kind of just right at the right time and place where they're deciding mental health for first responders is very important for themselves so and for good. the community that they serve. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we are there. So um, there's a lot that's really phenomenal. And, um, you know, it feels really purposeful and there's a lot of highlights. It's good. Yeah. And working with well over 7,000 people means that you are still, you're dropping little drops of water in buckets that then spreads out to touch other yeah. lives. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, when we started doing it everywhere we went, you know, we're offering Reiki and people were like, we have no idea what you're talking about. And now many people have heard of it. People have had it. Yeah. And I even have a couple pictures of police officers in uniform doing mudras as they oh, receive. Oh my goodness. The Reiki that's because awesome. Someone has come in and taught them meditation <laughs> and they've taken yoga classes and mindfulness. And so they're sitting there receiving the Reiki with their mudras. Oh. And I'm like, Oh, it's so good. It's that so is good. so good. And so Heather, what is your message to the world? How, what would you like to share with people? What, what would you like to say to all the people out there watching this, this, um, this little interview? What's your message? Well, I always hope um, to motivate people to, you know, continue whatever it is, whatever it means for you to continue with your own practice, whether that's your self Reiki, whether it's giving Reiki to your friends, to your pets, 
having conversations with people about Reiki. Um, and I, you know, ideally, again, on social media, we would be interacting so that the rest of the world could see what we're talking about and what exactly. we're doing. I mean, it's a perfect, you know, the algorithms are such that the more people that are in on the conversation, the more other people will see the conversation. And you don't have to be out doing it, you know, in your neighborhood. It would be great if you were. <laughs> you could just be online joining in conversations and supporting people who are doing it. And yeah. everyone in your circle will see those conversations. And exactly. if we're all supporting each other, it'll, you know, I mean, that's what going viral is. And more and more of these things are, you know, getting traction. Um, so yeah, I guess that would be my message. Join in the conversation, continue with your practice, <clears throat> support each other, collaborate with each other. And again, Summit, great opportunity to connect with phenomenal people, follow them, have conversations with them. <laughs> exactly. So so um, I just want to thank you, Heather. It's just been enlightening listening to your perspective, your point of view. And as, as I said to you earlier, um, you're in good company. You, you know, I've interviewed people like um, Johannes Randall, who is the most gentle, beautiful soul. And um, Ajava Peta and Fran Steiner, who's also in your summit, and Sally Wayne from Melbourne, and um, still looking forward to Hiyakaten Inamoto. But um, everybody had a different message, and I think that's the whole thing about the summit too. Everybody has a different perspective on how they look at and use their Reiki and how it serves them. And if we just listen and find one little secret, one little jewel of treasure we can add that to our own essence and just grow our soul and expand and, and touch more lives and I think that's what it's all about so thank you so yep. much yep. for sharing thank you so much for doing this of you. And thank you for inviting me and um yeah I'm honored to be with that list of people very honored <laughs> And let me also say to everybody, um, it was really interesting that Heather has actually, she put a, um, an article into the Reiki blog in 2013, which I couldn't find, but I will go and have a little look for that, probably because- Actually, uh, I'm going to correct you. I didn't put an article in. Oh, we, we put- were over here doing, We were over here doing our thing and posting it on social media and someone in Australia said, that looks amazing. And you guys just copied our Perfect. thing and- what they're doing in Chicago and we were so honored that across That's the awesome. world people saw what we were doing so um yeah so that's the that's <laughs> yeah, the power of one paths. person the power of one well, that's person. what I was talking about put put your message out there and people will see it and and that cross-pollination because that was what did I say uh 2014 we were offering Reiki to veterans and Reiki Australia saw that posted on probably um Twitter or Facebook and and said, look what they're doing and posted it. So all of you, all of Reiki Australia could see. Awesome. Yeah, we and now we've got to, to with that. Now we've gotten to hear more about it. So that's awesome. And now, now we're good friends. Now we're good friends. That's right. <laughs> and we're all connected. Perfect. That's right. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And uh, we will just uh, press the, the stop button on our recording. And um, if you want to hang around, I'll have another chat in a moment. Bye, everybody. And thank you for watching. And don't forget, we'll be putting all the links below this for everything. So do make sure that you follow Heather and Reiki Brigade and the Reiki Summit as well. Thank you so much. Namaste to everyone. Thank you, everyone.